Bert, my man, are we halfway through 2024 already? Oh, we halfway there. Right. Oh, let's bring yeah. some horror I'm movies. Gonna, I'm not going to ask any more. I'm not going to ask any more questions, dude. Just get. Let's roll. All right, here hey. we go. No! <laughs> What's going on, guys and gals, and welcome to Good Real Hunting. It's your boy Brad. The Brett Man is right over there. We're halfway through 2024, so we figured, hey, let's do our halfway through the year horror ranking, our top five horror movies of the year so far. This is a halfway point thing. It could change by the end of the year, but I'm excited. I mean, there's been some good ones that come out this year, Birdie. There's some good stuff to talk about, I think. Oh, anything can happen. I know what's gonna be. Sorry, man. I'm just in a singing mood. I'm just so freaking excited just to do this exciting top five with you because I'm very excited what your top five is going to be. Mine's probably going to be basic as fuck, maybe with one little surprise. Uh, but you know what? We'll see what happens here. But before we really dive on to this thing, uh, guys, if you're watching, what do you all think? What's your halfway for top five horror movies so far? So this is going to be movies that came out from January to June. Let us know in that comic section down below. But before that, Brad, do you want to maybe throw in an honorable mention or two that deserve some love that didn't make your top five? I'll do one. I'll throw Immaculate out there. Um, you know, this is, I like this movie quite a bit. Sydney Sweeney in here, tearing it up. Problem with it is the first Omen came out a couple weeks after. And I was like, oh, well, this is a way better version of that. And the more I've said on it, the more, like, it's still a solid movie, but it's also like kind of like a better than average movie with a really good ending is what it is. Um, but mm -hmm. I thought at the end of the day, Sydney Sweeney was, uh, she was good um, in the role. And it had some creepy moments. The ending is one of my favorite scenes of the sea of the year so far uh, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll leave it at an honorable mention for now <clears throat> definitely a what we call a what the fuck moment for the real horror awards for next year i could guarantee you that already but dude that's it that's got a, that's like a yeah that's like a oh shit more so you oh, know that's like a man. holy fucking hell you know, if that were a category. Like she, <laughs> it seemed like she was taking this shit. But anyway, so we're going to move on before I spoil the hell out of that. Uh, I want to throw out two honorable mentions for me. Uh, I'll go quick on these ones. My first honorable mention is going to be Lisa Frankenstein. And the main reason for this, to me, I feel like in 10 years, this movie is absolutely going to be a cult classic. I'm a little disappointed that not a lot more people have not only not seen this movie, but when they did, they're not really a fan of this. I thought this was very very super impressive uh from robin williams's daughter's first her directorial debut and catherine newton also gave a solid performance in this movie so hopefully people will give this movie a second chance by me just throwing it out there in my honorable mentions it's just unfortunately five movies were better than this one Another honorable mention, this one has really gone down the radar, and I want more people to put this on their radar. Uh, it'll be a little movie called Sting. This is a freaking spider movie, but this is more than just a wreck, your normal average spider movie. And without going to spoiler detail on that, uh, I, I don't want to go into it because I want y'all to figure out what the hell's going on. I just feel like if you're afraid of spiders, this movie will definitely take you to that next level. Yeah, I don't like spiders. I don't like spiders on strings, and I don't like spiders on ladders. I don't like any spiders. You don't like spiders here or there. You don't like spiders anywhere. Where's Brayden Tim? Is he's afraid of spiders too? Well, I don't see him here, so I guess we're gonna go over there. Anyway, um, I'll move him. on here. <laughs> <laughs> Number five for me is gonna be Low Lives. Uh, Low Lives, I should say. It, this was one that came out on Tubi. Tubi Original. Uh, we did the review for it, actually, after Jason Smith pointed it out to us, and we watched it, mm -hmm. and we're like, hey, that was a good movie. Like the hell out of it. I still think it's one of the better movies of the year. It's got hell of a good twist in it, and turns, and all kinds of fun things. It's one of those, we went in blind, we were, you know, we, we had a great time with that experience, and I say anybody who watches it should just go in blind, although the trailer is fantastic, too. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's got a, it's got a lot of great stuff. It's gnarly. There's some good kills in it. You know, obviously it's a low budget movie, but it still has a great like, you know, set of kills in there. There's there's you know there's some good stuff throughout it. So highly recommend it if you haven't seen it yet. Check it out on Tubi for free. It's my number five so far. Man, just when you cannot <laughs> prepare for trouble, 
Make it double, because, Brad, that's also my number five. I did a little last-minute switcheroo on this. My number five is also the low lives. Uh, not just because we are low lives, but we're low lives by watching low lives. But, man, I'll tell you this, uh, because Brad knocked out the most of it, so I'll just throw in, like, my two cents on this. Uh, the characters in this movie, super entertaining, uh, especially once you dive into the story more as the movie progresses. You're going to really like have a fun time with these characters. Well, some of them, that is. But, uh, dude, this is definitely one of the more shocking movies of the year and definitely deserves more love and attention. Like you said, Brad, this is on Tubi right now as a Tubi original. Not a sponsor, but we should be someday. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, great pick. Great pick. Number four for me, for Brad, the B-Man over here. Quiet Place Day 1 just came out. You know, it's one of those that I think could have been higher, but I was a little disappointed with it. You know, I thought that in general, like I said in the review, I thought that, you know, a lot of the the scares, the act, there wasn't really anything that scary about it. There wasn't really anything. Uh, I really didn't find it very suspenseful or, you know, really all that tension filled like I thought it would be. I thought the first two movies did a lot better when it came to you, the use of the monsters and you know the scares that it brings us and the action sequences from the monsters and all that stuff was just done better in the first two movies. But Joseph Quinn, Lupita Nyong'o, fantastic in the movie. The story they're telling is great. You know, it's just it's a little. I, I don't know if, if day one is the place to have this story, but it was a good story nonetheless, and I was engaged with it. I liked it. You know, it was definitely an emotional story and there were some great moments to it, uh, to see their characters kind of grow together. So still one of those more memorable movies of the year. So I'll have it here at number four, quiet place day one. Dude, solid place for it, man. Solid place for it. But what I'm going to go with, with my number four, it's going to be, uh, I definitely just say low lives is one of the more shocking movies of the year. Uh, I actually take that back. My number four movie is definitely going to be the shocking movie of the year of like, like where the hell did this movie come from? Uh, my number four is the first omen. Just because a lot of people were very skeptical of this prequel. And sometimes prequels are really hard to get over. Uh, but this one, I felt like succeeded greatly in that category the mood and atmosphere of this movie is very disturbing and dark especially one scene in particular that will make you go oh my gosh what the hell uh but man it's just the lead actress was great in this i do not know her name on top hand but i just know she gave one hell of a performance that would be a real horror award nominee for the female actress department because i feel like she knocked it out of the park but uh also this movie uh and this is what a prequel is supposed to do uh it makes you want to put on the original movie really really quickly after you get done watching the prequel just to see what happens next it's awesome my number four is the first omen nice um well taking it up to the top three now which is crazy um uh, number three for me is going to be abigail by radio silence you know this is the one you know it has that whole vampire thing going on with it um and i think in general it does a pretty good job with it it doesn't really add anything new to the vampire genre but it was they had a lot of fun with it and you know the character being uh the vampire being like a younger girl um that gets kidnapped and then she just slays all of her freaking kidnap like i thought that was just a cool story i thought the way they worked that in was really was really nice um mm -hmm. it had some good fun moments you know it's not necessarily my favorite radio silence movie but um it's right in line with them it's the same what you would expect to see from them has the same tone you'll see in ready or not and uh and their other stuff so yeah check it out if you haven't seen it i know you know it didn't do that great at the box office but you know this mm -hmm. still I think it's still one of the better horror movies of the year so far. So, yeah, it was a good time. Dude, that's, a, a, again, another great pick, my friend. Uh, my number three is going to be Late Night with the Davy. Oh, I, I apologize. Uh, hey, late, hey, freaking Davy, that was for you, my friend. My number three is going to be Late Night with the Devil. That's what I meant to say. Late Night with the Devil. Uh, this one had a uh, quiet release at the theater, and I was so glad to get out to the theater to experience this movie. Uh, and, man, what a freaking ride this is. Uh, it's just a movie that progresses scene by scene, act by act, of like what in the world is going to happen next. And just when you think you had the answers, the movie 
movie changes the question or changes the scenario on you. I just think the cast in this movie is very great. I love just the whole 70s feel you get with this movie. And somebody, I forgot who said it, but so if you're watching this, you're going to get, I promise to give credit once I figure out who this is, but they said it best. This movie is actually the best to see in the comforts of your own home because if you get that full realization that full like feel experience that you're legitimately watching a late night show with like somebody and just seeing some weird shit man but it's weird shit that will keep you entertained so my number three is late night with the devil that's my number two so if you're in trouble to give it a double or whatever uh you said you said a minute ago but <laughs> i think out. you know this is yeah it's one of those that's uh it just makes you feel uncomfortable the whole time you're watching it. You know, it plays out, like you said, in real time it, from really like as a viewer watching the show with some back scene back behind the scenes stuff kind of worked in. But it still kind of plays out in real time, a night of TV with the little stuff at the beginning to give you, you know, an idea. But the whole time it's just doing little things that just make you feel uncomfortable. It's showing weird people in the crowd. You know, it's making, you know, it's it's, you know, the following a certain character for a little bit extra, you know, things like that. So you can know something's up but not quite know what yet. No, you're not going to know what direction it's, it's, it's going until you get later into it. Um, but yeah, to me, it felt like a found footage flick. It's kind of a new twist on found footage that we haven't seen before because it's not like a literal, like, oh, a camera, like we, we found a camera in the woods and this is the footage that was found kind of deal. But it's like, it's kind of played out that same way though. Um, so I liked it a lot. This is my number one. I've actually kind of bounced back and forth a couple of times since I've seen them. So this one may end up going back over. We'll just see how it plays out the rest of the year. But right now, I'm going to have Late Night with the Devil at number two. Nice, dude. I love that. And I appreciate you uh, throwing in there. But this is technically a lost a lost footage uh, horror movie. It definitely is going to be one of the better ones that I will remember for some time, too. So great job throwing that in there. I knew I forgot something positive about that movie. Uh, my number two, Brad, you mentioned this earlier, uh, is going to be Abigail. And this is what I did. Uh, my top two movies are like the best story of 2024 and the most entertaining of 2024 in the horror uh genre i'm gonna go with the entertainment on this one for my number two with abigail and uh man dude this movie is so much fun they got a great group of characters it definitely goes back to the basics of what radio silence wants to do is just have fun create all these cool scenarios all these weird scenarios and just have fun with it you know go back to the dark comedy side of things uh with the horror genre that they did with ready or not uh this one could rifle to ready or not because i know we did that video and I have Ready or Not and Abigail in my top two. And Abigail almost beat out Ready or Not. But, dude, what really makes this movie shine for me? Because this was the movie that Melissa Barrera really broke out of the Screen franchise and decides that, hey, I don't need the Screen franchise to be successful in the horror genre. I can shine on my very own in a very own original movie. And she definitely did. And Abigail and Melissa Barrera, you own my res you earned my respect. And I salute you. And, of course, uh, Dan Stevens and Catherine Newton also gave great performance in this movie. So number two, Abigail. Nice. All right. Top movie of the year so far. The Strangers Chapter One. Now, I feel <laughs> like... Now, I'm just making sure you're listening. That's all. It's actually Night Swim. I'm always think, listening. And I'm going to keep this <laughs> in and edit it out where you're talking good about The Strangers. Chapter One. I, I'll always talk good about chapter one, but pray at night. I know, I'm day. just screwing with <clears throat> you. It's really pray at night. But Brad, what's your number one? Night swim. This one <laughs> had such an atmosphere to it that no bullshit. No, number one today for real, for reals is the first omen. Mm -hmm. I thought this movie was scary as hell. I thought it was a perfect, like, like you mentioned already how it's a perfect prequel to the first, the original omen. And it is, you know, I don't like, I'm not even a huge omen fan. Like I like it. I go back and I watch it every so often, like in October when I want something spooky. You know, this is something that I'll uh, that I'll catch. And I've only I've only seen it a few times. But watching this movie made me want to come home and put on that original Omen like immediately. That's how effective it was. It leads right up to the beginning of the first of the original Omen. I keep wanting to say first Omen. It's really a mind fuck when you think about it, <laughs> um, because the original is not the first Omen anymore. Because the first Omen is the first Omen. So you can't say the original Omen is the first Omen anymore but you used to be able to say that because if you're talking about that with the remake then you would say the first one but then this you know anyway um that being said 
Um, yeah, some really scary shit in this. Um, like I, it came, like I said, a couple weeks after Immaculate, and I was watching. I was like, wow, this is actually way better than that was. Um, it's really, it has a lot of the same beats. Got some of the same shots even, but this one I think is better in every way. And yeah, I like the story that I told. I like that it has this kind of impending doom um, throughout the movie because you know how it's going to turn out because you you know you know the omen exists, so you know how this is you know not going to work out well for the people in this movie. Um, so just knowing that while you're watching it, you know all these um, you know these callbacks to the first omen movie, I thought they did a really good job with in this one. A couple of the kills, a couple of the you know the the bad omens, if you will, that people had to experience, really effective for me scary it had some scary moments in it the score is impeccable especially when that original omen theme drops um hey yeah outstanding so i love it man right now it's sitting at number one for the year so Dude, that's where i'm at with that, it that is a great great pick especially with that score i have a good feeling that could be the real horror award for best score uh could for be. next year i very well could but again we got another halfway point but before we get to the ever half i want to get to my number one as well and my number one brad it's really day one. It's going to be a quiet place day one because, dude, this one told the best story of the year so far, man. And, dude, this movie actually got me to jump a couple of times with how, like, because again, with the quiet place franchise, it really just. It's just something that should be studied in cinema history with how the sound design, how you can use it to tell your story and to scare the crap out of people, too. Super effective with the sound editing. And, of course, uh, Lupita and Joseph absolutely dominated in this movie. I thought they were perfectly cast in. They played their characters to perfection. I agree it's not a perfect movie and a lot of stuff uh, holds it back uh, for me like for me as well. Kind of like the similar like a pit like what you said as well. Uh but man, a quiet place day one man, I can't get enough of it. I'm sure it's going to change later on. But as of right now, the halfway point, especially if you're watching this video as Maxine comes out, it might not be number one for very long, but hey, I'm gonna mention it while we're on that topic. So my number one is a quiet place day one. Shit yeah, Birdie. Shit yeah. Yeah, man, dude, dude, like I'm telling you. We just list some bangers right there, but uh, we have not seen anything yet. We got a whole never halfway to go. We got Maxine. We got Long Legs. We got Terrifier 3. We got the Crow remake. Oh, God, I I'm so sorry. We've only just begun. You know, uh, it's uh, there. I think the, the year is really backloaded with good movies. There's been a couple of them that, you know, really saw this year, um, but nothing really close to perfection so far, in my opinion. Um, so I, I do think we have, a, you mentioned it, the ones just now uh, that coming out the rest of the year, um, a lot of things to be excited about uh, coming down the mm -hmm. pipe. So uh, and before I even forget Nosferatu 2024 as well. I got to throw that out there to end the year yeah. with a bang uh, to ruin our Christmas spirit. Yeah, that's a Grinch. <laughs> a that Nosferatu figure. guy, he doesn't like Christmas at all. What do you think about halfway 2024 horror movies? Do you agree with our top five? Is your top five different from ours? Or is there even a movie that we didn't mention in our top five that is in your top five? Let us know in the comment section down below. Let's get that discussion rolling. If you want to help us find the good reels, you can do so by finding us on all of our socials that are listed right down there in the description. Go down there and check them out. As well as Beers with the Bros, a link to that new channel. It's going to be debuting this month, likely, most likely, at the end, uh... the end of this month. Yeah, so get over there, I check it out. Feel the power of beer. Unlimited and also, power. And also Alien and Romulus, too. Man, see, dude, there's so much more doozy. movies we can freaking talk about, dude. Dude, yeah. I'm telling you, man. But hey, without that, uh, I'm going to get a little doozy and I'm going to blow crap up. It's 4th of July week, baby. So you all stay safe and we will see you all for the next video and live stream. Peace out. <laughs>